back now with my special guest, Star Jones. Let's talk Oprah Winfrey. She's giving lots of interviews mm -hmm. to go with this much-anticipated uh, Lee Daniels film, The Butler, in which she's apparently terrific. I haven't seen it yet. This is what she told uh, my uh, great friend, Larry King. Let's watch this. I saw a sweater in the window. This was on Madison Avenue. And uh, they wouldn't open the door. And they wouldn't open the door. And I am not the person who pulls the race card. So I am just so like, wow, gee, I wonder what it, God, do they see us out here? What is amazing to that, she goes on to say, this store on Madison Avenue, just up the road from here, very smart part of New York, obviously in Manhattan, that she actually rang up later and confronted them, and somebody at the store admitted that they'd had two black intruders break in the week before and therefore assumed the worst when they saw Oprah. Sounds um, a little George Zimmerman-like to me. Extraordinary profiling um, going on here. What do you make of that? Um, I wish I could say I'm surprised. I think uh, most people that are in New York and in California, smart people, people who have been exposed, get surprised when you hear a powerful African-American woman or man identify that racism still exists in the United States. And we're not talking about Alabama or Mississippi. Um, we're talking about New York City, Madison Avenue. Have you experienced it in New York? Um, not as much because New York is sort of my city and I tend to go places where I'm expected. Mm. And I think in some ways I've started to do that because I don't want to have these kinds of right. experiences. So you're almost subliminally avoiding it. Exactly. Um, I have uh, been, you know, passed up uh, by a taxi driver. I've also had a taxi driver yell something foul at me. Um, Mind you, I get both of us. Right. <laughs> uh -huh. but, but I think that might be more. Uh, I just because I'm annoying. You, right. <laughs> Whereas I've had some the foul N word uh, yelled at me on a New York City street. Have that you has really? happened. Oh, absolutely. In the middle of the street. And how do you react when you hear that? I act like. They're not talking to me because it's not what they call you, it's what you answer to. I know exactly who I am, and I'm never going to allow anybody to put me in a box. Has it got any better since the first black president of the United States or not? Yeah, I, it's not so much that it's gotten better. I think it's become more of a conversation. And, um, the, you know, the race conversation is one that black America has had regularly for a long period of time. This is now a conversation that white America is now being a part of. And in order for the conversation to turn into action, we need to be talking together. Right. And we need to be sitting around the table exposing each other to different aspects of our lives. You know, the people who ever were in uh, the Madison Avenue store when they mm. saw Oprah Winfrey, they immediately thought, black woman can't afford this, so why am I letting right. her in? Instead of thinking she could buy the store if she wanted to yeah. <laughs> and put some people in there who were not racist. It's a bit like that Julia Robertson in Pretty Woman's Name. Big mistake. Big, Big mistake. Big. This and, is the three billion dollar you know, woman you're talking and to. And she's being very discreet and not identifying the store because, right. you know, Oprah Winfrey could stand on the television and say... Close oh, that store down. Exactly. I agree. And she'd be perfectly in her rights to. She also compared the killing of Trayvon Martin to the death of Emmett Till in the 50s as a pivotal moment in America's race history. There are two schools of thought about the Zimmerman Trayvon case that actually it wasn't about race. Others think it was. What do you think of Oprah linking the Emmett Till case well, to this? Clearly, the facts and circumstances were very much different. But in terms of it being pivotal and starting a discussion mm. and starting a turn, I think she's exactly right. I think she's spot on. This case, no matter how people want to gloss over it, the Zimmerman uh, murder case was definitely involving race. There is no way you will make anybody with any good sense believe that George Zimmerman would have been following a young white kid walking in that same neighborhood, would have stalked him, would have gotten out of his car, would have called the police, would have done what the police told him not to. There's no way you can believe anybody, with, anyone with good sense believes that. So if we give that race at least was a factor, you're going to now say, how do we learn something from this? As the president likes to say, a teachable moment. And the teachable moment is every young black man should not be presumed to be doing something wrong. Mm -hmm. We have to start that right here in the media. We have to stop putting images of African-American young men in orange jumpsuits as the example of who black men are. Mm -hmm. Black men are teachers, black men are police officers. Black men black are presidents of the United States. Of the States. United States. Doesn't need to be a bigger endorsement than that, really. Uh, let's turn to